Okay, so three things. Qualifications, important. Experience, important. Contacts, networking, very important. If you're able to do one of these things, that's probably not gonna be enough for you to break into the professional game. Two is good if you've got the experience and you, you've got the, the qualifications, you're a good coach, that's all well and good, but how, how do they find you? And like I said, these jobs aren't necessarily advertised. So contacts, networks, important. Um, the other way to do it, um, and this is, I don't like using the word naive, but this was this is what I thought to begin with. I thought you'd go in at a at a youth level, and then you'd be able to progress through, like under 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, up to the professional game. Um, that that certainly wasn't the case for me. Um, although I've I've seen a few coaches who have managed to get into the youth team and then. Um, broke into the first team environment, but um, off the top of my head, there hasn't there hasn't been too many that have been able to do that. Um, and certainly now, and I'll, I'll give you the reason why I think that's that's the case now. Um, if you manage to get into academy setup or into youth football, you're going to start developing skills, contacts again, and your qualifications if you're not too careful, will start to deviate off. That's not to say it's not a great place to start your coaching journey, because it is. Um, like I said, it enables you to learn, um, again, with enthusiastic players, good players, how to how to coach. So you do, I, I, I do think it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to, to um, Get your experience and sort of cut your teeth at that level however if you're wanting to work yourself through the ranks um certainly now there's there's different qualifications so there's the youth team qualifications so if you're going say you've done your level one level two and you've you're either going through or got your way for b and you're coaching 14 year olds or 15 year olds at a at a professional club you then need to make a choice of what your next step is if you're going to go off into getting qualifications that are more specific to the the environment that you're in at the moment so for instance in in england in the uk there's the the youth badges now and they go all the way through as well level one two three and four um the next thing youth youth football youth so soccer and elite soccer completely different different worlds um, and they also have different different cycles. So, for instance, if you're if you're at a club, what what tends to happen is um, the coaching staff will, if they leave, then a new coach will come in and bring his his staff in into that. So that first team environment sort of changes on their own, and that is in a different world with all the other professional professional clubs. Um, that leads into my next point. I've had this for 20 years. Um, a lot of a lot of coaches use the excuse. Um, how, how to put, how do I put this? Use the excuses about professional footballers um, coming out of professional game and then being given jobs. In, in a coaching environment or being able to get through the coaching badges quickly. Now what is important to understand, I, I would strongly suggest against going against that mindset um, quite simply because even though they might not necessarily have had five years or ten years of, of coaching experience doesn't necessarily mean they don't have experience or relevant experience uh, so for instance they've come through the youth they've come through the the academy the youth setup and then they've gone into the reserves and the professional team they they know they know the infrastructure know how it works and they certainly know what's required to become become a professional player um, 
So their, their route in is very, very different.